Hi, everyone. My name is Petya. Very happy to be here. First time for me at uh, Tic Tech. So today I'll talk to you about open mapping. So you hear a lot about maps and their role in disaster response and climate action. A bit about me, I've been two years at the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team and my job title is Networks and Engagement Lead, but I would describe that I really sit at the intersection between tech and community. I'm very passionate about the role of technology when it's really used by, uh, used by people. So humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, I've had really nice conversations with people who know about OpenStreetMap, but I would love to get a few hands of uh, people in the audience of have you heard of OpenStreetMap or have you used it? Great. And if you haven't, even better, because you'll hear more and you'll, you'll learn more um, today. So OpenStreetMap is a free, open, editable map of the world. It started over 20 years ago, and the main point is anyone can use the map and anyone can contribute to the map. What you'll hear today is about the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team and the role of maps in disaster response and climate action. So as a team, we started over 10 years ago in response to the earthquake in Haiti with the main aim of focusing on, as I mentioned, humanitarian action and community development um, through open mapping. Where we're based, so I'm based in the UK, one of the few people who are based in Europe from our team. Uh, but the way that we operate, we're nearly 80 people and most of the activities that you'll hear about the mapping efforts that we focus on are focused in our four regional hubs that you can see, Asia Pacific, Eastern Southern Africa, Western Northern Africa, Latin America and Caribbean. So most of the focus is within those countries. We have 94 priority countries, which is really high number, but a lot of different projects um, in those countries. Um, and here, a few, I always like to add people because everything we do is related to that. So we are around 70 employees, 40 different countries, but at the core of what we do is also working with the volunteers, so the people contributing to the map, uh, the people improving the tools that we do. So here are a few photos of our colleagues. So what I'll talk to you in the next 15 minutes a bit about is the role of, you know, we, we talk about civic tech, about community action and open mapping. And I really like to think of the importance of this intersection. We hear a lot about collective efforts, collective intelligence. So the role of people, the ideas and the contributors, the technologies, I'll mention those so you can also uh, find out more, and the information and data. But it's all these three parts that are really crucial in what we do and in, um, in, um, in our efforts. So first, the people, and I really want to focus, because obviously the technologies are used in being able to produce these maps, uh, but I wanted to give you a few examples, just an indication of the role of open mapping and the open mapping movement in disaster response, and more recently, some of the projects that we focus in uh, climate action. There are plenty of examples, I think, where we hear of earthquakes, floods, and where contributors are mobilized. So just I'll give you two examples, and there are um, a lot more that you can see. So last year, I'm sure all of you know, when the earthquake um, happened in, uh, in Turkey and Syria in February, uh, what we as an organization did is mobilize a lot of contributors. So those are volunteers who use, um, they use their laptops first to look at satellite imagers and basically provide information of where buildings are. And I think sometimes it's hard and, you know, here in the UK we're like, oh, we have maps, they are available, but there are many data gaps in maps and how humanitarian respondents can reach to those places. So there are a few numbers on the slides that you can see within, so this was, you know, from February to April, 9,000 contributors. So those are volunteers who add information to the map and you can see the other screenshots of organizations, humanitarian organizations already using those maps. And there is a video, I think once the slides are shared, you can see of a doctor basically saying, thanks to this map, I was able to reach people directly. So very briefly, but through the technologies that we have, people are able to add this information. Uh, in Libya, in Libya and Morocco, last year in September, again, within a few days, uh, floods, really big floods happened. And that's again where we mobilized, uh, we set up projects, mapping projects where contributors add information. I'll tell you a bit more about the process for that. This is just an example, again, of, that you can see of adding information and being able to produce those maps that are used by uh, different organizations. 
So a lot of the efforts that we focused on so far has been disaster happens and then very quickly how do we uh, produce those maps so that you can reach communities, you can reach people. Um, and this, um, earlier last year, we launched also this pro a project called Mapping for Climate Ready Cities. So can we provide, and in places where we are anticipating, uh, anticipating disaster, anticipating um, those actions to already produce, uh, produce maps. So you can see here, maybe a bit blurry, uh, some of the projects, as I mentioned, in our four regional uh, hubs. So those were 13 cities that were identified, and I will just give you an example of one of those and the specific efforts that we are focusing on. Um, so why that? As you, as you probably all of you know, the climate crisis are inherently geographic, and there are many places where vulnerable people are, and they are not represented on the map. So as opposed to waiting for disasters and floods uh, happening, uh, these are some of the efforts of this project that we have started. Uh, as you saw, there are 13 different cities. I'll give you one example uh, that I'll talk through, and that's in Dhaka in Bangladesh. So in this project, we're working with uh, World Vision. Uh, and again, the main aim is to strengthen open geospatial data. Why focusing there? Again, I, I want to thank all my colleagues who are in our Asia Pacific Hub who work on this project. So I'll, I'll talk uh, mainly about the work that they are doing there. Um, but the two main reasons was the significant migration to Dhaka, again, uh, because of climate change, um, and focusing on Mirpur, which is a specific um, district from where people are entering um, north into Dhaka. So what's the aim of this, of what are we doing when we talk about civic technology, um, is the main aim is to complete this base map. So what we mean by base map, when I talk about maps, is, uh, you know, thinking of the buildings, of the roads, of the waterways, so that those are made, uh, made available. What are the goals? So what would you then use the map for that's not uh, available at the moment? Again, collecting this data to inform decision makers, and I know uh, that's a broad term, but thinking about fire hazards, wa uh, waste management, uh, wash, and others. And when I talk about producing or adding data to these maps, it's not just people from our team. So it's a lot of volunteers. I've added a photo here again from one of our uh, open mapping gurus. We have this initiative where we train individuals on using the tools and being able to add data. Um, so it's a lot of volunteers that actually join these mapping efforts and here they're doing field data collection. Long-term goals, again, having an ecosystem that you have the information available with the technologies um, that are there. Um, and the last thing before I tell you a bit more about those technologies, and maybe you'll be interested in knowing, um, you know, in your organization, in your cases, how you can use them. One of the highlights in this specific project with, uh, as I mentioned, Climate Ready Cities, is actually working with the um, Dhaka North City Corporation, opening some of the imagery. So one of the big challenges with mapping information and uh, is actually having openness to some of the imagery, imagery data. So that was working with the government, with uh, World Vision Bangladesh, uh, was one of the big successes. So I'm quite excited about all these projects, and they're in a lot of different cities and locations, and if some of those are relevant uh, to you, um, come and speak to me. So take another five minutes, I hope I'm up to time. Um, so as I mentioned, a big part of uh, what we do is the volunteers, right? The people joining in, adding information. Um, what we do as well as an organization is building these technologies with our community. Um, and what they look like, I know all of you presented about different, you know, different technologies, um, civic tech, um, so the main tools that we focus on, they focus on capturing imagery so that then you can look at this imagery and being able to add information to say, this is a building, um, this is the road, this is the waterway. I will mention a bit about an AI-assisted tool we are working on. And then once, let's say, you've added this information, you can add um, what we call field mapping. So you're already, let's say, in Bangladesh, the building is adding to the map, but you can say this is a hospital or add additional information that then people can use. So I'll click through briefly these other tools because some might be relevant to you. So all of the tools that we focus on and that are used in the example that I mentioned in Bangladesh, for instance, in order to make this possible, they're all open source um, 
So open aerial map allows you to uh, use and upload imagery, imagery information, especially I think now there's a lot more focus on drone imagery as well and being able to upload that. Uh, I spoke earlier to the hot tasking manager, so if there's one tool that you're interested in knowing more about mapping and contributing, um, I would say take a look at the uh, hot tasking manager where you can do that later today, tomorrow, uh, and start contributing by mapping. Um, as with, I think, any space, you know, people ask questions on AI, we also have something that's looking at AI-assisted mapping service that's focusing on a very much local approach. So, for instance, we work with our colleagues in Kenya, looking at a specific region there where we can train the information on buildings in giving predictions for that. But it's not a global model, so the main idea is to look more specifically at an area. Field mapping, as I mentioned, after you've, you know, you've added, you've specified whether that's a building or not, you can add additional um, information um, through the field mapping tasking manager. And if you're new to OSM, or maybe if you are familiar with it and you're more interested in kind of creating maybe a map exporting an information for a specific location, uh, there's also the export tool that um, we have focused on. Again, I've added this, it's on GitHub, I don't know how many you know, developers or others we have, but ways to get involved and contribute, I always say, is everything is on GitHub, which you can reuse, but you can also um, contribute to open source by looking at all those tools I've just mentioned, um, they're available there. And yeah, my last slide is how you, all of you who are here, what can you do next? How you can join the movement? There are many different ways. Um, all of the projects, I've just given you three brief examples of, um, of projects, but all of the work we do is done in partnerships with different organizations in the regions we are based. So there's a lot of organizations. So if you're one, you can um, get in touch. You can start mapping. So if you have free time and you want to contribute, go to the hot tasking manager. We run different working groups. So we have a tech and innovation one. It's a virtual group where if you're interested um, in hearing more about the tools or engaging, it's an open space. Contributing to open source, as I mentioned. Uh, donating, again, I'm sure with a lot of NGOs, that's another space that we're looking for. Uh, funding opportunities, and you can reach out to me. I hope I'm up to time, but thank you so much.